around 60. 30 again tomorrow night, clear. Sunday, meteorologist Tom Shemansky is expecting a mostly sunny morning and then increasing cloudiness. Chance of light rain, light snow by Sunday night, 58 for the high. Windy on Monday, a good chance of light snow and or light rain, 41. And windy Tuesday with a chance of snow showers or flurries, 37. Fargo, Moorhead, cloudy, 49 degrees. Paul Jurgens News Radio, KFGO. This is The Drive with Dan Michaels. Now, now heard throughout, throughout the region, region with 100,000 100, watts on 104.7 FM. 94.1 FM in the FM Metro. The KFGO mobile app. KFGO.com. And on the Triple Towers of Power, the Mighty 790 News Radio. KFGO. The Mighty 790 and 1047 KFGO. Good afternoon. KFGO time is 4.09. This is The Drive. I'm Dan Michaels. Wally Lines is our producer. You hear the old familiar tune from uh, Emergency, the television show. I'm sure Randy Mantooth is en route to rescue somebody right now. And that's our theme when we have uh, the chief of the Fargo Fire Department joining us, Mr. Steve Dirksen. It's time for checking in with the chief. Chief Dirksen is in studio this time. Hi, chief. How are you? Hey, Dan, good to see you and Paul today, and uh, it's great to be in studio. It is great to have you on, uh, in studio, and, and he's on TV, too. Uh, Paulie, jump in here for a second. So we do this all the time, but since we haven't had a guest for a while, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> uh, but uh, you're going to put this on YouTube later on, right? Yes, I will. Right now it's streaming live on the KFGO Facebook page, so you can see it as it happens. How about that? Yeah. You can see how handsome Steve Dirksen is. <laughs> right. And when he's sitting next to me, I make him look extra handsome. Don't you agree? I do agree. So there you go. So And then when we're done, we'll be posted as well, besides being live on Facebook right now. So it's time to check in with the chief, and uh, we're introducing something new today. Before we start talking about uh, the burn ban and uh, recreational fires and uh, m- maybe even the annual report a little bit here today, uh, we wanted to introduce something new to checking in with the chief, and that is uh, the chief's spotlight firefighter, uh, of the month and we're going to do this uh, every time the chief is on with us from now on and uh, chief uh, tell us about who your selection is uh you know we've got one of our uh, well we've got 122 outstanding individuals that work for us uh, at the fargo fire department but uh today i want to you know ha- hopefully we'll have a spotlight of uh, captain brandon wayner uh, who's been with us a little over 10 years and uh, has been a captain for a few years here and uh he just uh, does a lot of great things for us, and uh, I'll let him uh, kind of tell us about himself and what he's doing for us. Yeah, he joins us uh, today because he was out of town, couldn't come in the studio. Hi, Brandon. Brandon, uh, Captain Brandon Weiner is uh, with us today. Brandon, how are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thanks so much. Brandon, what's your specific job at uh, the Fargo Fire Department? So I'm a captain on B shift out at um, Osgood Fire Station 7 on Engine 807, um, one of the the captains on our hazmat team, as well as just normal fire responses. Okay, and so uh, you're doing something with Cass County Radio or something? Can you explain what you've been doing lately? Yeah, so quite a few years ago, um, one of our former assistant chiefs got me involved with our, our radio system, and so now as we transition over to our new radio system, i um, been working a lot with trying to figure out um, things like how many radios we need, how they're going to be programmed and set up for our guys, um, and going through the process of actually transitioning our department over to that new radio system hero um, next month or two. Can you explain what hero is and why this is important? Why this is a big deal? Um, as far as why our radio system is yeah, a big deal, why you're switching over to it. Yeah. Um, so our old radio system, um, it's just older technology. A lot of the, the equipment we have isn't supported anymore at this point. Um, and there's a lot of, new features that have come out as radio systems have gotten you know more and more computer based there's a lot of things that it's going to allow us to do um, to improve communications not only within our department but um, really throughout the region and work a lot better with both other fire departments and other agencies like law enforcement EMS public works that kind of thing in uh, previous years were you guys unable to communicate directly uh, within your own radio system because you had a firefighter system and a police system, you couldn't talk to each other? Correct. So in the past, um, you know, if we wanted to relay a message just from us to some of the police officers that were on scene, a lot of times we would have to do that either through our dispatch center or just by physically walking over to one of the, the officers on scene. 
Um, what this will allow us to do is everyone will be able to to have a common communication path. You know, we can call the police officers or the ambulance directly from here on out. Sounds like I was going to say in the old days. It sounded like a real government institution, didn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. One one talk to the other <laughs> yes, one. Yes, it was. Uh, so uh, let's find. It. Go go ahead, Brent. Yeah, that's. I was just saying that's exactly what it was. You know, there was a. We made it work with what we had, but um, like everything else, technology has definitely advanced and is going to allow us to to do a lot better things now in the future. Captain uh, Brandon Weiner is joining us today. He is our very <laughs> first uh, checking in with the Chief Spotlight Firefighter of the Month. He is a captain with Fargo's Bravest, the Fargo Fire Department. Brandon, why did you want to be a firefighter? What brought you to this point in your life? So both my dad and my grandpa were um, firefighters in Dickinson as I was growing up, um, volunteers on that department. So it was something that I had always looked to be doing. Um, it wasn't until I was in college, though, where I decided I didn't want a job that where I was going to be sitting behind a desk. Um, I wanted something where I was going to be out and about um, doing something, especially something different every day. Um, that's really where I started looking at becoming a firefighter more as a career instead of just a, um, a volunteer opportunity. What's the best thing about being a firefighter? Uh, probably just that it's something different every single day. Um, you know, we go into work thinking you know, we have a little bit of an idea what we we might be doing um, based on, you know, tours or inspections, things like that, that we might have planned. Um, but once, uh, you know, once we get there, that can all go out the window as soon as, you know, someone calls 911 yeah. needs help um, or someone calls the station just, you know, needing help with a project or, you know, things can change on dime. So you never really know what's going to be coming next. Yeah, that's right. Well, they say all battle plans are out the window second to you start and uh conversely now what 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 one thing you would you wish you could change remember the chief sitting right here so what's what's one thing you wish you could change (laughs) at the fire department you know um there's not really that many things that um that are really that tough there you know probably the the hardest thing that um they've run into over the years is um every once in a while you know you're trying to plan family events or something you know at times our schedule may get in the way um, just because, you know, there, there really isn't a day that we can, um, necessarily have off or, you know, everyone's guaranteed a day off. Um, but a lot of it's just kind of been learning how to deal with our schedule and you just start planning family events around that. Um, you know, things like Christmas, maybe it isn't always on that day that our celebrations take place. You just kind of learn to adjust and move it to a different day. And, you know, that goes to everybody that's listening to us who on their Christmas day, when they have a grease fire that breaks out in their kitchen, uh, because they're uh, you know kid- cooking like crazy for the holidays and et cetera, uh, you call and you expect the Fargo Fire Department to be there, and you know that's one of those things. That's one of the realities. That's why Brandon's celebrating Christmas on a different day. Uh, Brandon, I-, I really thought it was the answer was going to be something like because uh, you let that one guy cook all the time on your shift. <laughs> who's the worst? Who's the worst cook on your shift? Who do you not let cook? Um, you know it's. It's hard to say. There haven't been a, a lot of bad meals very recently wow. here. So, um, really, anyone who's willing to cook, we're not going to complain about it. <laughs> and Brandon, quickly tell me about your family. Um, so I'm married to my wife Carly. She works um, as a pharmacist at Essentia. Um, so I've got her, and then we've got a, our little five-year-old mutt um, named Steve. He's a mix of a bunch of different breeds, but he's our little dog that we have around the house. Okay. Well, terrific. Hey, Brandon Weiner, who is a captain with the Fargo Fire Department, Fargo's Bravest, he is the Chief's Spotlight Firefighter of the Month. Captain, thanks so very much for uh, joining us today, and have a wonderful evening and a great weekend. Thank you very much. You too. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Keep up the good work. I can see why you're very proud of him. Uh, Before we run out of time, we're checking in with the Chief. We do this once a month on KFGO on the drive. Uh, The burn ban out west, uh, the fire that's going on at Medora, my goodness, I think every one of us has just been absolutely alarmed. And what's weird about this is a month ago, we talked about this very issue and how not to don't, please don't burn on windy days and da-da-da and look what's going on. Yeah, you know, it's it's just dry out there. We're, you know, we're looking at drought conditions. Uh, you wouldn't know that here in the Red River Valley after the last few days. Uh, right. The rain has been a very welcome sight. But uh, other places around the state, it's been incredibly dry. And, you know, this this little bit of rain here, I don't want folks to get a false sense of hope. It's really appreciate it appreciative and uh and uh it's doing some good things right now um but don't lose sight of the fact that in just a couple of days we live in north dakota 
Uh, the wind can change and dry things out in a big hurry, and uh, and and have some. We, it can, we can still have some problems here in, in our area as well. But uh, especially as you're looking as traveling out out west and you know family things this summer, uh, really be cognizant of those things that are out there. Recreational fires. I I don't think there's. If if I had to make a top three list of the things I love most about summer around here is being able to be out. Ten o'clock. Finally, the sun goes down in June, July. And we can start a campfire, maybe roast some uh, weenies or some marshmallows, have some s'mores. Yeah, you know, those are those are great things. That's what makes uh, the upper Midwest a great place to be. It's a great way to enjoy the summers. Um, you know, and, and as, if it's not dry or if, it, if it's, you know, there's good moisture around, um, having those are, are great things to have. But we you don't need a roaring uh, uh, campfire, bonfire. bonfire yeah. You know, yeah. we don't need uh, flames uh, licking uh, the the tops of our roofs and, and things like that. Uh, oh, it's so fun, you know. But you know, a, yeah. a small, you know, two foot tall flame is is plenty of flame to do what you need it to do. Uh, you still enjoy it, the warmth. You can smell like smoke when you go to bed, um, and all those kind of things. You can still <laughs> roast it. the hot dogs or the the marshmallows over that, and it does all does the same job. Actually, you know, the coals, hot coals, do a nicer job, I think, of. Uh, roasting the marshmallow to get it just to that right golden sure. brown you know the flames tend to make them charred black true and, uh, they start on fire yep <laughs> and so but when you do that you know don't go to bed with the fire still burning make sure you put it out uh, make sure you're watching those things um you know that's just my pet peeve personally when we have campfires is you know it might uh, make a little bit of a mess but uh it's sure a whole lot easier to clean up that little bit of mess than uh, trying to clean up your house or your neighbor's house um, because you didn't take care of things properly. Nobody likes to be preached to. Yep. Nobody likes to uh, have someone feel like they're telling them what to do or sing, things like that. And we're we're certainly not doing that. We're we're just asking everybody to be careful. But uh, with how dry conditions are, somebody driving down the road on I ninety four or I twenty nine right now, smoking a cigarette, holding a bomb in their fingers if they toss that thing out the window. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it just you know, like the 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 old song. It only takes a spark. Yeah. Um, to get a fire going, it uh, you know that's all it takes, you know, and and just you know we had it here a few years ago, uh, uh, you know, no fault of their own, just a a chain came off of a truck and started sparking, and we had a grant uh, a, a a large grass fire that developed alongside the interstate between Fargo and Grand Forks, and you know it's nobody's fault; those things happen, and but just just be cognizant and be watching what you're doing, making sure that uh, you know when we're going to start pulling boats and campers around, and they all have safety chains, and true, just making sure all of that stuff is is hooked up properly before you leave, and it's in good repair, and uh, you know we can all have a great summer because you know when we're talking outside of the Fargo metro area here, we're we're fortunate enough to have uh, career paid firefighters that are uh, you know on duty all the time, but when you're talking some of the smaller towns out there. You're, you know, you've got the, the guy that's running the elevator right. or the yep. Senex station um, or the banker. Um, and and if you have a fire at, at your place, um, they're having to leave their job to uh, go take a, take care of a fire that, you know, if, we, if we're paying attention and, and doing things well and uh, using common sense, not not burning when we have high wind warnings, when we're at, at high, uh, high fire dangers, um, when we're in red flag warnings, those kind of things. I know it's easier. It moves the fire a lot faster, <laughs> but uh, it also you get in trouble a lot faster yeah, as well. And, and be cognizant of those folks that uh, have to take away from their job to go take care of your your emergency. Yep, keep that in mind. We're getting played off the stage once again, Steve. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> we take up our time, don't we? Steve Dirksen is the chief of Fargo's Bravest, Fargo's Firefighters, our Firefighter of the Month, by the way. In the spotlight was Brandon Weiner. He's a captain uh, with the Fargo Fire Department as well. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, Chief Steve Dirksen. Thanks very much, and I look forward to next month. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, everybody out there, and uh, we appreciate all, all the support that we get from everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. You're listening to The Drive on the Mighty 790 and 1047 KFGO. You are listening to The Drive with Dan Michaels. I guess I was going about 65 tops. Seven.